there, art nerds. I have another watercolor field test for you guys today. Today, I am reviewing the Shapiro Farben watercolor palette. I purchased this palette off of Amazon for around $36, and I have already unboxed and swatched it for y'all. So I'll be sure to link that in the cards and in the description as well. I am reviewing this right after finishing my Mia field test, so I'm definitely going to compare this palette to the Mia and the Mei Liang watercolor palettes, and I'll do that at the end of this video because if I can recommend a watercolor palette for you guys that'll meet your needs and help you make art a habit, I definitely want to do so. I'm really excited to share this review for you guys today because this one took me by surprise and I'm really looking forward to sharing what I found out with you guys. So as I already mentioned, I reviewed the Shapiro Farben watercolor palette a little while ago. This is a palette that also comes with a block of cellulose watercolor paper as well as a water brush. For today's field test, I'm not going to be using the either of those actually. I really did not like the cold pressed uh, cellulose watercolor paper that they included and I'm not really a big fan of water brushes so I'm going to be using a cotton rag watercolor paper and my favorite favorite the silver black velvet watercolor brushes for the painting so for in the unboxing swatch I felt like there were a lot of optical brighteners I felt like this was going to be a palette that would cause a lot of problems for me painting so I am painting on Stonehenge's cold press cotton rag watercolor paper this is the same watercolor paper that I used for most of my field tests and this illustration was inked with a Sakura Pigma FB brush pin a brush pin that is waterproof and alcohol marker proof so if you're looking for a great all-rounder brush pin I highly recommend this one and as with most of my field tests I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this illustration and that's gonna give it the best chance possible of you know allowing the paints to kind of shine on their own so I want to go ahead and apologize I want to go ahead and caveat I am going to mispronounce Shapiro Farben about a million times today. I did not take any German. My German is atrocious. I took a lot of French and I don't have access to internet because we got hit by Hurricane Ida. Otherwise, I had planned on listening to Google's pronunciation of this name and practicing it over and over again because I know my horrible butchering of the German language caused one of my viewers a lot of distress. She even said that I pierced her ear. So I hope you can wear earrings now but I do apologize for that and I acknowledge that it's going to be a problem here on out so if you hate hearing somebody mispronounce German over and over and over and over again please forgive me friends I know y'all are very tolerant so this is a larger watercolor palette larger than our 36 colors I want to say it's 50 something but Again, I don't have access to the internet. So I am going to make sure I list how many half pans are in this palette in the description for you guys, just to kind of cover my bases. And um, I really like many aspects of this palette. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-activate it. That's gonna give these paints a chance to soak up some water. And it's gonna give us the best chance at color vibrancy, saturation, and quick activation. It's gonna give these paints a chance to shine. I really like certain aspects of this palette. It kind of combines elements from certain colors Cotman palettes and the Sakura Koi palettes that I really like. It's got a removable mixing palette. And I'm going to use that for today's review, even though I am not using the water brush or the cellulose block that they included. And it also has these kind of like click in paint cartridges that Cotman also uses. Now, one downside to that is that these are not the same size as a standard half pan. So you can't actually use your regular preferred half pans in this, but you can either pry out the paints or when the paints are all used up, replace them with a similar uh, color. So there is some reusability to this palette. So after 
after the Mia field test, these half pans look really small. And since I just wrapped up the Mia field test and got burnt by all the optical brighteners, I'm going to keep that in mind and try to keep this piece light because I know these are full of optical brighteners. We have a pretty wide array of colors. So while I'll mix the skin tone, I'm, I'm not into the buff that they've included. It has kind of a plastic feel. I'm going to mainly rely on what's actually in the palette as well as optical mixing. And there's no way I could get every color and review every color, but I'm going to try to get a good range and represent color families in today's field test. And speaking of today's field test, this is an illustration from Lilliputian Living Volume 4. If you guys don't know, I kind of don't know how you missed it. You must be new here. If you're new here, leave a big old like and consider subscribing. Hi, welcome. Nice to meet you. But this is from Volume 4 of Lilliputian Living, and Lilliputian Living is my yearly inked drawing challenge in October where I imagine the world from the height of seven inches tall and I do a lot of world building so I create a written prompt as well as an inked illustration and I've been utilizing a lot of those inked illustrations kind of redrawing them fixing them up and using them as field tests recently so it's kind of cool to compare the original inks against the revised inks that now have color. So I started with a really light application of cerulean and notice that the color separated both in the plastic pellet palette as well as on the paper. I'm not really used to cerulean separating out, nor am I used to it containing so much PW6. In the Shapiro Farben palette, it's more of a pastel. If it were to be labeled vertiver, I'd be less surprised. I don't hate the slight granulation, but I'm a bit miffed at the color shift. And these seem to work well in watered down mixes, unlike the Mia watercolors. If you guys can hear cat noises in the background, it's because I'm staying at my mom's house while I don't have power at my own house. So Bowie, my cat, and Dax, my family's kitten, are kind of learning how to get along. But Bowie is not as into Dax as Dax is into Bowie. So they're getting along decently well, but sometimes Bowie's gonna meow to say back off. And that's probably gonna be captured in the video. So I just wanna let you know, everything's okay. I'm keeping an eye on them, but I'm also not gonna like lock them in separate rooms while I'm recording this. My cat, fellow cat parents get where I'm coming from. The plus, oh, uh, so Payne's gray went down so dark and then it dried a lot lighter. And I think you guys can see that in this slow-mo here. And the wet into wet is kind of hit or miss on that. And I think that's gonna be apparent in the slow motion as well. Sometimes you get nice diffusion, sometimes not. I think the optical brighteners are probably what prevents these cheaper student grade watercolors from doing nice wet into wet or layering well, just in general. And these are kind of weird because you can do some wet into wet. It's not as nice as professional grade watercolors, but it's still a lot better than the Mia watercolors. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about in these slow motion segments. It's going to both show how the color looks wet as well as how it dries. And it's also going to show how the color diffuses or doesn't diffuse when it's wet into wet. So I am a watercolor comic artist. I also do a lot of watercolor illustrations. So that kind of colors how I review art supplies. And I think it gives me kind of a unique voice. If you're unfamiliar with my work and you'd like to get a feel for where I'm coming from, I would love it if you check out my web comic. It's all in watercolor. You can find it at 7inchcara.com. This will particularly appeal to you if you like tiny people stories because the main character, Kara, is only seven inches tall. You can also check out more of my work over on Instagram at uh, instagram.com slash nettosoup or on artstation at nettosoup.artstation.com. And of course, you can hang out with me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash nettosoup. I'll be sure to link all of those in the description below. I'm also going to link the Shapiro Farben palette. I am also going to link my original unbox and swatch review in case you guys want to check that out. And I'm going to link some relevant tutorials that might be interesting to you guys as well as list out my show notes because when I do these illustrations this isn't in real time this has been time lapsed and adjusted quite a bit so I take notes as I paint and I'm going to share those with you guys down in the description below so even if you're not super into watercolor as a video thing if you're more of a watercolor as a blog post thing check the description I got you covered friends so I layered cobalt blue over the cerulean blue because it was just too pretty and I couldn't resist cobalt blue is a 
often a bit opaque, but this feels a bit more opaque than I'm used to. It does granulate nicely though, leaving some nice texture on the paper. When you mix cobalt or cerulean with water for a lighter wash, it falls out of solution so fast. So you're gonna have to keep mixing it. And these are kind of interesting so far. They're like a mix of the Mia and the Mei Liang for me. I know there's a lot of student grade watercolors out there and a lot of student grade watercolor coming from China. And while I reviewed Cotman and Sennelier student grade, that was a while back. And I feel like both are way overpriced for how they handle. So I never really recommend them. In general, I recommend avoiding student grade, but there's been so many interesting offerings coming in. I'm starting to kind of revise my opinion on that. If there's a student grade watercolor that you guys are interested in that I haven't reviewed yet, let me know. I'll definitely check it out. So the Shapira Farben is a bit more expensive than the Meiliang or the Mia, but you do get a lot more in terms of color selection. So if you're an artist who likes to work fast, maybe like a watercolor comic artist, or maybe a brush letter, or maybe you're doing cards, this might be a good palette for you because you have a lot of colors at your fingertips and a wide array of colors. We've got a nice selection of interesting pinks and purples. We've got some nice yellows, greens, we've got some beautiful blues, and we've got some earth tones as well as some more opaque and pastel colors. Now, some of these colors are surprisingly weak once you add a bit of water. You're going to use a lot of paint to get the oomph you want. And that was something we really saw with the Mia palette as well. These aren't as bad as the Mia palette though. I'm using a very soft watercolor brush, silver black velvet, which is a mix of squirrel and synthetic. And it might work better if I used a full on synthetic, but I don't really like full on synthetic or how they handle, except for using masking fluid. I find them to be too stiff. So if you like synthetic brushes, you may find that your results are a little bit better. Now I am gonna have a PO box soon. <laughs> Definitely once Ida stuff gets resolved. Our our post offices aren't even open. So if you'd like to torture me with student grade watercolors, you'll be able to send me some very soon. And once I have a P.O. box, I'll make that known so you guys can send all the terrible student, student grade watercolors my way. Color control is a challenge because in thicker saturations, the paint just kind of globs onto your brush. And this is something we also saw with the Mia colors. Colors seem to glaze and layer fine, although they dry a lot lighter than they are when they're wet. And this is not uncommon for watercolor, but as with the Mia, I find the difference to be pretty significant and thus worth mentioning. They do reactivate from the plastic palette after it's been totally dry, but you might get some undissolved paint flex in your palette, which can cause a bit of grittiness that you might not want. Not gritty, not granulation, grittiness. Granulation is something we often want. Grittiness is something we generally want to avoid. So in general, be careful when reactivating these watercolors. Make sure you reactivate them thoroughly and just kind of keep that in mind. Maybe give those reactivated watercolors a little bit more time. So while I do have some notes for this palette, I don't have nearly as many notes as I had for the Mia palette. And part of the reason is I kind of fell into the painting groove with this. I kind of started to hit hyper-focus and I enjoyed painting. Instead of thinking about, oh, I gotta take notes, oh, I gotta take notes, I just kind of fell into the groove. And that's something I am looking for when I'm reviewing watercolors, whether it's professional grade paints or student grade paints, is how easy is it to just kind of fall into using these paints. These are not paints you're really gonna fight with a whole lot. They do have some quirks, they do have some issues, but I was able to just kind of get into the zone and mix what I wanted. I was also able to successfully do color mixing, which was something I thought I wouldn't be able to do with these, as well as color layering and glazing, which is something I'm definitely looking for when I'm reviewing watercolors. I, anyone who is familiar with my work, anyone who's watched my tutorials knows, I do like a million layers. And if I can't get watercolors to layer, then they're not that useful for me. So that's definitely one of the points I'm always keeping in mind when I'm looking at watercolors and when I'm re reviewing watercolors is how well do they layer, how well do they glaze, and do they reactivate when I'm applying new layers on top of them. So I did notice that the masking fluid started ripping up the paper. So I know I'm gonna have to re-ink the flowers, 
but this is the fault of the masking fluid, not the paints themselves. So with the Mia palette, there was a point where I knew I was going to have to re-ink this illustration because there was a lot of weird opacity. There was a lot of weird muddiness just from the paints containing so many optical brighteners that not re-inking wasn't really an option. For this one, I could choose to leave it as is or decide to re-ink. And that's really kind of where I want to be, where it's not something I'm forced into. It's something I can actually choose for myself. So other than managing the opacity and the optical brighteners, I almost forget I'm painting with these. These paints are fairly easy to use and seem to work well both in saturation and when watered down, which is really nice after fighting with the Mia watercolors. It's funny, I thought this was going to be the set I'd fight with and that Mia would be easy based on my unboxing swatches, but it's actually the opposite. While not all colors are a hit for me, there's a lot of colors and most of them are great. The colors also mix together well and unlike the Mia watercolors, I'm not noticing significant loss of saturation as I apply layers. This is usually caused by the white extender in used in optical brighteners which are used in student grade watercolors. That's not an issue here. You can easily layer colors without reactivating or lifting which is big as I mentioned earlier and again unlike the Mia watercolors. But if you do need to lift a color you can with a little persistent which is what I want to see. I'm a comic artist and I usually paint with a really large palette of convenience colors. So I have to admit, having such a large color gamut makes painting a lot faster for me. You don't need this many colors. You can paint with just six and you probably won't use all of these colors, but it's nice to have them handy and can make grabbing exactly what you want much easier. So when I'm doing these kinds of field tests, I usually like to paint a combination of flowers and or objects and people. And that gives me a lot of information about how well paints like these would work for fellow watercolor comic artists, artists who are interested in getting into watercolor illustration. You know, that's my general demographic. That's who I'm reviewing for, people like myself. And I found that I had no real difficulty in mixing skin tones. I avoided the pre-mix, the color that's kind of like meant to be like pale people skin tone. I avoided that. I wanted to mix my own. I generally prefer mixing my own skin tones. And I found that I had no problems whatsoever. I was going for a slightly darker skin tone. I'm referencing Greek girls for this illustration since she's holding um, an urn of olive oil and she's surrounded by olives and olive branches and olive, olive flowers. And I didn't really have any difficulty with mixing the colors or layering the colors or achieving what I wanted with these paints, which is great. I'm also trying to use some of the more unusual colors, the sort of colors you might not normally see me use, like some of these really pretty pinks. And I just really like the inclusion of them. It's not for every artist, but it's definitely very handy for particular types of artists. Like, like I said, comic artists, illustrators, maybe people who are painting commissions at conventions and you want a lot of those colors ready, or people who are into doing card making or coloring for relaxation, or just anyone who doesn't necessarily feel like sitting there and mixing color and mixing color and mixing color. I also found that these colors layer really well and we have some really interesting color selections in this palette, which is just a lot of fun. It's nice to see something that isn't your everyday exactly the same watercolor palette, which is one of the reasons it got kind of boring painting um, student grade watercolors in the or reviewing student grade watercolors in the past is that in the US what was available it was all the same 12 colors and they were all kind of mediocre and they all kind of fought you at least with these palettes from China you do get some interesting color variations you get some pastels you get some interesting color choices it's inspired by a different culture and a different art culture and a different art palette than what we typically typically get. So it's much more interesting for me. Now one thing that really surprised me as I used these watercolors is they really didn't contain as many optical brighteners or extenders as I thought. With the Mia palette, I was constantly having to change my rinse water just to get water clean enough to not paint mud. With the Shapira Farben, they don't dirty the water as much, which kind of tells me, well, A, they're not globbing onto the brush as much as the Mia did, and B, there wasn't as much sediment when I would change my, win change my rinse water, which tells me there's not as many extenders in there. So, um... 
in general, I think you're probably getting more paint, even though these are slightly smaller half pans than the Mia Diamonds, than you would be getting in the Mia palette, just because they're not so stretched out with extenders. Now, to me, that's not just better for the artist in terms of more economical. You're not going to go through these paints quite as quickly as you would with the Mia palette, but it also results in better illustrations that look a little bit more professional than what you'd be able to do with the Mia palette. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to compare the Mei Liang, the Mia, and the Shapira Farben palettes to give you guys an idea of which might be the best palette for you. But I would say the Shapira Farben palette is a little bit closer to the Mei Liang palette, which I happened to really like and I was really impressed by, than it is to the Mia palette, which really disappointed me. There's just a lot to really like in this palette and a lot I felt I could do with these watercolors. And that's fantastic. I'm always happy when I can share a great art supply with you guys that is inexpensive and could be great for someone who's just interested or interested in getting started or is on a budget and doesn't have a lot of money to spend. Speaking of half pans, I prefer that these are removable half removable half pans, unlike the pans in the Mia and the Mei Liang palettes. This gives this palette an extended life. That said, these are smaller than traditional half pans, so not only will uh, not only will you use them up a bit faster, but if you want to replace them with your favorite existing half pan paints, it won't be an easy swap, especially since these pans fit into a cartridge system. However, if you save the half pans, you can refill them from two watercolors, which is something that I do with my Daily Driver palette all the time. In Anyway, with these, I keep forgetting that I'm painting to test them, and I'm just enjoying the process and the paints. With the Mia, I was trying to salvage what I could of the painting, constantly aware of Mia's flaws. But with the Shapiro Farben, I can focus on improving the painting, trying different things, and enjoying the art. This is what I look for when I'm reviewing student grade watercolor. Can I use familiar watercolor techniques and make a piece I enjoy, knowing there will be a few shortcomings? Or will I fight with the paints every step of the way and end up with something that looks amateur? And with this palette, I think I can make something I actually enjoy that I don't mind showing to other people. And that makes this a much easier palette to recommend. Now, like I said earlier, this review does not focus on the included cellulose watercolor block. It doesn't include the gouache that they included. It doesn't include the water brush. I wasn't really interested in testing or reviewing those three because I don't like water brushes to begin with. So that wouldn't be a very fair review. It seems like a pretty standard water brush. I didn't notice any major flaws and it didn't seem like a particularly cheap water brush either. It's one of the better built ones, I think, but it's still a water brush. And you know, I'm not really that impressed with water brushes to begin with. So I'm not the right one to ask about that. As for the white gouache they've included, you know, I thought about using what their white gouache at the end because I do use white gouache to add in highlights, but I ended up liking this painting so much. I didn't want to run the risk of ruining it with a gouache that I don't really like. I've reviewed a few watercolor palettes that include a white gouache like this one does and didn't like the gouache that they included way more than I didn't like the paints if that makes sense so I decided to just kind of leave that out of the factor here and I apologize if you you were very interested in the included gouache I'm sorry that I didn't review it uh, speaking of I am using my own gouache I'm not actually that picky I like uh, Utrecht gouache I like Blick gouache I like Windsor and Newton gouache and I tend to let it dry out in the tube and reactivate it as I go I just didn't want to fight with a gouache that might contain a lot of gum arabic and if you're interested in what I think of the cellulose pad that they included with this you'll have to watch the unbox and swatch video I actually review the paper a bit more fully in that so hopefully I will answer your questions there so I am re inking a little bit I had to on the flowers because the masking fluid really tore up the paper there and I wanted to add in some clarity and make it look a little bit neater with this illustration though 
the inking is more optional. The paints didn't obscure the line art a whole lot, which tells me they don't have as many optical brighteners as you might think for a paint at this price point. But sometimes I like to re-ink anyway because even professional quality watercolors can add some opacity and can kind of muddy up your line art or muddy up, yeah, muddy up your line art just by a thin filmy glaze on top of it. So sometimes even with really nice professional grade watercolors, I'll re-ink. So the fact that I have to re-ink or I'm choosing to re-ink isn't really like a, a condemnation nation of the paints but if the paints are so muddy that I have to re-ink like with the Mia palette that's a big warning sign and I usually recommend that people avoid it but I really had a lot of fun using these watercolors to paint these illustrations or this illustration I will probably use them again in the future I'm not sure for what yet but I really like having a wide array of colors when I'm doing brush lettering or I'm painting something a bit more graphic that's more reliant on the brushwork and it's nice to have student grade watercolors around for when I'm teaching watercolor classes just more materials that people can play around with and it's always nice to have inexpensive watercolors that I can loan to friends and they can see for themselves and kind of get a feel for it so I will definitely be keeping these around whereas with the Mia I will probably end up rehoming them once I'm done reviewing a boatload of student grade watercolors and that's what I generally try to do with stuff I don't like is I try to find another home for it so now it's time for our comparison so all the way on the left we have the Mia in the middle we have the Shapira Farben and then on the right we have our Mei Liang pigments so the Shapira Farben is a bit muddier and possibly a bit more difficult to work with than the Mei Liang but it has larger half pans and it's easier to envision reusing and refilling the Shapira Farben half pans so here are the Mia or I'm sorry the Mei Liang half pans this is from the Mei Liang Field Test. I'll link that for you guys. I really liked this palette. It's in a metal tin, but the paints themselves are extruded paints in a plastic liner. There's some weird cost cutting choices, but I can kind of understand where they're coming from. But all in all, I think it's a great student grade palette. And I would recommend it to somebody who's looking for a fun and very usable, inexpensive student grade palette. This is the Mei Liang pigments are made by the same company that produces Paul Rubens. So I think they're very similar. This is from the Mia Field Test. Mia makes those jelly gouaches that are so popular. I did not really like the Mia watercolors. I found them very difficult to work with and very frustrating. And I found that my work ended up looking much more amateur than it usually looks. So I was very disappointed in this palette and find that I can't really recommend it to you guys. But I'll be sure to link the Mei Liang and the Mia unboxing swatches and the field test so you guys can see for yourselves. So side by side, I can definitely see a difference in paint quality, but when using the Shapira Farben, I really thought they were more comparable. If you care about color quality and granulation, I'd recommend the Mei Liang palette. If you care about lots of color and a neat palette that you can reuse, I'd recommend the Shapira Farben. Compared to the Mia, the Shapira Farben palette is just leagues beyond. It's so much better than the Mia palette. To me, the Mia watercolors created a piece that looks very student, very amateur, and I really struggled with using the watercolors and basic watercolor techniques that should be easy to execute on cotton rag watercolor paper. The Mia colors are more muddy. Uh, the addition of optical brighteners is impossible to ignore. The Mia watercolors were a struggle to use. The Shapira Farben were a lot of fun. And all three field tests were painted on Stonehenge cold press cotton rag watercolor paper. So it's all the same paper. And as you guys, hopefully can see they handle very differently. I think the Mei Liang looks the best followed by the Shapira Farben and then last are the Mia. So in terms of what I would recommend, I'd recommend the Mei Liang as my first choice. These handle the best and are a lot like professional watercolors. And this makes sense as Mei Liang is made by the same company that makes the Paul Rubens paints. I'd recommend the Shapira Farben palette as my second choice, especially if you really value a lot of ready mix color and lots of space to mix. This is a palette that can possibly grow with you even as you outgrow student grade watercolors. Last is the Mia palette. It was really just a struggle to use, very frustrating and not fun to paint with. I feel like the end result is not nearly as nice as it could be and I had to work much harder to get a similar quality result.
So here they are in order of my preference from left to right. So we have the Mei Liang palette, our Wild Rose Girl. In the middle is our Shapira Farben palette, our Olive Girl. And then all the way on the right is our Mia palette, the Strawberry Kiddos. Hopefully you guys can see the differences in these. I think the Mei Liang just handles so much better. The wet into wet blends are soft, controlled, diffused, very delicate. The Shapira Farben is a little muddier. The colors are not quite as fresh and clean as the Mei Liang palette, but it's not bad. And you get a lot more color than you do with the Mei Liang palette. So if you're looking for a wider color gallet with, gamut with a lot of pastels, the Shapira Farben palette has what you're looking for. And then finally, the Mia, it just looks muddy to me. It was a struggle to paint with. The paint was really gloppy. It was just very frustrating and I just can't overlook that. When I'm watercoloring, I watercolor to relax and I enjoy watercolor. And if I'm not having fun when I'm painting, if it's because of the paints, there is no way I could recommend the paints. Here's a close-up of the Mei Liang field test, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. I was able to get some really beautiful wet and wet as well as optical blends with these paints. Here's the Shapira Farben. Not quite as nice, a little bit muddier, but still a lot of fun and still very capable for student grade paints. And then finally, here's the Mia. I think you can probably see where I really struggled with color mixing, with layering, <laughs> with everything, basically. And here is the Shapiro Farben palette. And I really want to talk about the palette. I mentioned in the inbox and swatch that I thought the palette design was really neat and took features that I liked from other student grade palettes. The swappable cartridges from Cotman and the movable and posable plastic mixing palette from Sakura Koi. The half pans are custom to this palette and feature a little ledge to help you remove them. And regular half pans are too large to fit in the slots. So if you want to swap paints, either pry out the existing pans and fill them with tube paints or wait until you've used them all. And here is a Meaden half pan. It's a standard size half pan. It will work in most watercolor palettes. And I'm going to pry out our Shapira Farben pans from their weird little cartridges so you guys can kind of see. So over on the right hand side, there's a little ledge you can use if you have nails, you can use your finger. Uh, sorry, my hands are all scratched up. That would be Dax the kitten. If you have a palette knife, that would probably work better. You can't just pop the half pans out like you can with the Cotman, but they do have a little ledge on the side that you can use to kind of pry them out. And I would definitely recommend waiting till they're dry to do that. So hopefully, as you guys can see, the Shapira Farben pans are just a little bit smaller than your standard half pan, which it's a little annoying. Maybe it's a nitpick. It'd be really cool to put some of my favorite regular watercolors in here. And generally most half pans are standardized. And you guys can see the Meaden half pan just will not fit in the cartridge. It's just a smidgen too big. So you are going to go through these watercolors a little bit faster than you would with your standard half pans. The plastic mixing palette is fairly easy to clean. Not as easy to clean as ceramic, but if you want it to get perfectly clean, you're never going to. Some of these colors are going to be staining. Thalos tend to be really staining, but you can use a melamine sponge, like a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser to really clean them. I will warn you though, there are some studies that show those sponges can lead to cancer. So you might not want to use them. I, I just don't care that much so I'll just spritz it down with some clean water kind of reactivate most of the paints and then just wipe them off using a regular paper towel it's not really that big a deal What are the pros and cons of this Shapiro Farben watercolor palette? The pros are decent color payoff. Colors were 
uh, work well desaturated when mixed with a lot of water as well as at full saturation. The colors mix cleanly. The colors layer well. There's no real reactivation issues. There's some granulation which adds visual interest. You're able to mix skin tones decently well which is huge for me and there are lots of fun colors. So if you're lazy like me you have great colors at the ready. The cons are none major. These handled way better than I expected them to, especially based on how I felt during the unboxing swatch, and particularly after doing the Mia field test. This review was strictly for the paints, not for the water brushes, um, the included white gouache, or the paper that came with it. The paper was a huge con for me. I hate that cheap pad of paper and would have gotten these paints at the price I paid without the paper happily. Either white label a better paper or nix it entirely. It really does the paints no justice. So what's my verdict on the Shapiro Farben watercolors? This dark horse really surprised me and I am so glad. I was ready to write this one off. It did not show well in the unboxing swatch and honestly, I was considering not even field testing it. I have to thank the commenter who said my pronunciation of Shapiro Farben literally pierced their ears. They inspired me to give these watercolors another shot and I'm legit glad I did. Sometimes a little negative comment can really lift you up to new heights so long as you don't let it own you and I hope my pronunciation and spelling are better. The spelling at least should be because the name is on the swatch card and I referenced it every time I type Shapiro Farben. Just a reminder though, I'm from Louisiana. I took 10 years of French and forgot almost all of it and no years of German. So it's probably not great. I'm heavily relying on Google for pronunciation help and I don't have any native German speakers in my family. So I'm just kind of doing the best I can. But Hopefully it's better, but less about that and more about the verdict. These aren't half bad. If you want lots of color, don't want to have to mix everything you need, but don't mind mixing sometimes. If you want a refillable, reusable student grade palette that could grow as you grow, this could be a great fit for you. These are fun. They do as I ask and don't contain too many optical brighteners. I'll only have to re-ink the places where the masking fluid tore up the paper. So all in all, I really like this Shapiro Farben watercolor palette. It has some cons, some detracting factors. It doesn't handle quite as well as the Mei Liang palette, but it's a great substitute if you can't get a hold of the Mei Liang palette or if you just want more color or more space to mix. This could be a great palette for someone who's just getting into watercolor, a younger artist, or someone who wants a lot of color and doesn't want to have to fuss about with mixing up the paints and figuring out what color combinations work. This palette handles a lot of that for you. I can't recommend the included cellulose paper. I'm not a big fan of water brushes, so I can't really speak to the water brush, and I haven't tried out the included white gouache, but I really like the palette design, and the paint themselves isn't half bad. I hope you guys found this review and field test to be helpful, useful, and informative. I had so much fun revisiting these paints and I am so glad they were better than I expected, especially after the Mia field test let me down. Reviews like this are only made possible with funds out of my own pocket and funds generated from the kindness of my amazing patrons on Patreon. Everything is purchased out of pocket and all opinions are my own and based on my years of experience using watercolor for comics and for illustration. So hopefully you guys found this review to be helpful, useful, and informative. Hopefully this helps you guys make great informed choices when you're buying student grade watercolors and hopefully this helps you make art a habit. I want to give a huge shout out, a big old thanks to these amazing people who support my work over on Patreon. You guys can join them over at patreon.com slash Thank you guys so much.